Hello guys, so in today's Let's Talk Aquatics, we're going to be talking about how many fish you should have in your tank. Should you listen to the commonly thrown around one inch per gallon rule, half inch per gallon, or just how many fish should you have in a tank and what size fish should you have in the tank? Without any further ado, let's get into it. So I am by no means a professional uh, when it comes to keeping fish, however I would definitely say I'm more qualified than some average jaw off the side of the street. And don't take my uh, word as like the word of God. This is purely all from personal experience and all that fun stuff. But any actual further ado, let's get into the video. So there are three main kinds of tanks and stocking that you'll see when keeping fish or you'll have yourself. So to start off with, we have my 40 gallon, which I'm going to be using as an example, which is pretty overstocked. So there's more fish in this tank than there should be. The next one would be fairly stocked. A fairly stocked tank is not overstocked and is not understocked. It has a fair amount of fish in it and is definitely not too many and not too little. The next kind is frogs. Frog tanks usually only have one frog in them and not much nitrates. Last but definitely not least, we have understocked. This tank is a 20 gallon long and has two bumblebee gobies in it, an ocellaris catfish, and then just a bunch of shrimp. Now, I would personally consider this understocked as there's almost no fish in it, and it's a whole 20 gallon. Out of those three options, I would definitely prefer to have an overstocked tank, or at least a slightly overstocked tank, because I love to watch all of the movement in my tank. However, it definitely doesn't exactly hurt me when I have an understocked tank, otherwise my 20 gallon would not be empty and have barely any fish in it, and my beta tank would have more fish in it. So, overall, I'd say I definitely prefer an overstock tank, however, I'm perfectly fine with an understock tank. And I would actually recommend that you do a fairly stock tank or an understock tank, because if you have an overstock tank, it'll take a lot more work. And I do actually have to put in quite a bit more effort into my 40 gallon than any of my other tanks, because it has so many fish in it. If you want to get something simple and not have to worry about cleaning it every week, I would definitely recommend you go with like a 20 gallon and around 10 to 12 simple smaller fish because if you do, you won't have to clean it out that often. And if you have plants in there, and at least enough of them, and the fish are small enough, you might never have to clean your tank except for once every 5 to 6 months. I mean, I can't remember the last time I cleaned my 20 gallon long. And it's not like it's unhealthy and I'm just leaving it. It just has such a little bio load that the plants are handling it. Although I do have to remove the duckweed from time to time because it grows so much. So that's the end on the different kinds of tanks and my opinion on it. Now I'm going to talk about the kind of fish that you should have in your tank and the size of tank you should have for certain fish. So I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than a 10 gallon for really any kind of fish. However, you shouldn't even go with a 10 gallon. Yeah, I, I would recommend, like I already said, just start with a 20 gallon. There's a lot more options and a lot of different fish you can have in a 20 gallon, and you're not nearly as limited. And I would go with a 20 gallon long, A, because they can fit on a shelf much easier, and B, they look a lot better, and a lot of fish would rather have length rather than height, as these fish are small. They're not meant to dive down. They're meant to swim around. So a long tank is always going to be better than a deep tank. Now, even though you have a 20 gallon, there's still some fish that are going to be very common. However, you can't get them because a 20 gallon is just not enough space for them to properly be able to swim around. So as my first example, the black skirt tetras, which you're currently watching in this video, could not go to anything smaller than I'd say a 29 gallon, uh, even a 40 gallon, which is what they're currently in because they need a lot of space to swim around in because they are constantly moving and they are relatively big fish. They are very thin, however, they are relatively long and relatively high and they're just, they're very, very active fish. Another example would be say, Danios. Danios are also very common, however, they will be flying across the top of your tank all day and all night long. If you get these guys and you put them in say a 20 gallon or a 29 gallon or something of the sorts, it's not enough space for them. They are constantly running and running and running or swimming uh, across the tank. They are never gonna stop moving. So they need a 40 gallon tank to have enough space to be able to constantly be swimming around and just have that enrichment that they need. By the way, there's a few different names for these fish. They'll be called like 
rainbow danios and stuff like that and they'll be called zebra danios spotted danios just stay away from danios in general a lot of stores will sell a pleco or cleaner fish as a cure-all for like algae and stuff this is a pleco they're not a cure-all they'll help a little but they will not fix your algae issue that's mostly due to your fish uh, producing nitrates which is feeding the algae that just means you need to clean your tank more so make sure you do proper research on your fish so that way you don't get stuck with one you don't want that'll get the size of your head in two and a half years. I just want to reinstate that real quick. Make sure you do your research on your fish before you get it. Do not go into a store and buy a fish because it looks cute if you have no clue how to take care of it. That's not saying that you need to know everything about the fish. However, you should definitely know whether it's a hot water, it's a cold water fish, what diet will mostly consist of, what size it'll eventually get, how long it will live, simple stuff like that. And I mean, if you really wanted to, you could Google it while you're in a pet store. Or if you're not at like a Petco or PetSmart, just ask the employee as long as it's like a locally owned business on common stuff like that. And I'm sure they'll help you out with it. Uh, usually it's no issue. Also, I would not consider shrimp or snails towards the total amount of waste being produced in your fish tank because they usually require a very little amount of uh, food and they produce a very little amount of waste and they clean up a bunch of stuff. So I really wouldn't count like a bunch of shrimp or a bunch of snails towards your total counter of like how many fish you have in there. If you have like eight ginormous snails, okay, that's like one fish worth maybe. Now we're going to move on to the one inch per gallon rule. So when it comes to the one inch per gallon rule, my overall thoughts immediately are it, it's a good thing. It's about as simple as it gets. There's not much to it. It is as simple as one inch per gallon. With that said, however, I, I would definitely recommend that you don't follow it to a T because you don't want to stick like a 10 inch fish in a 10 gallon. You don't want to stick like a 20 inch fish in a 20 gallon. Uh, what it's referring to is like 20 one inch fish in the uh, 20 gallon or you know 15 one and a half inch fish in your 20 gallon stuff like that that's about it when it comes to the one inch per gallon rule it's really just that simple but once again if you do proper research on the fish you're getting and you know their behavior and how active they're going to be and their size and all that fun stuff the one inch per gallon rule as long as you're following it relatively close you should have a relatively balanced out tank with pretty happy fish, uh, at least overall. So I would say follow the one inch per gallon rule or half inch per gallon, inch and a half per gallon. I've heard all that stuff, but just stick to it. It's really basic, really easy until you get the fill for keeping fish. And then once you more understand the fish like I do, you can really put anything you want in a tank as long as you're taking care of it properly. Now I'm gonna talk about some fish that you could have in say a 20 gallon or uh, a 40 ounce so to start off with i'm going to talk about 20 ounce so the most basic thing that you could get that you would definitely enjoy and love to interact with is betas do a beta sorority tank with a handful of other small fish so this is my beta sorority tank i made a whole video on a beta sorority tank which is right here and they're very interactable fish they're very unique very personable uh the basics of it is just make sure they're all females some other things you could do are different species of tetras, like Rasbora tetras, you have Neon tetras, Black Line tetras, uh, Pork Chop tetras. There's a lot of different kinds of tetras, and most of them will be relatively happy in a 20 gallon and won't be worried about not having enough space to swim around and all of that stuff. So tetras are a really good option. Another really good option would be, say, guppies mostly male guppies uh you don't want to get into females unless you're ex you're gonna breed them uh of course you could get females anyways i would recommend you do because it's definitely more interesting to have them breeding uh but they're very easy to take care of they'll just kind of swim around pretty basic fish and you shouldn't have any issues with taking care of guppies and i'm sure there's a few youtube videos on here that tells you exactly how to keep guppies alive and I would say the last basic fish you could get is platys, not mollies. Platys and mollies look very similar. However, platys will stay much smaller than mollies will get. And with these guys, you can also breed them really easily. Just get a couple females and a male, and you'll have plenty of baby platys. And I'm sure you'll love looking at them, and I'm sure you'll enjoy watching them grow. 
They're very basic fish, they're easy to take care of, and I definitely need to get myself some more because all of mine recently passed away of old age. But uh, they're very basic to take care of, very easy fish, and just overall lots of fun. And they'll be perfectly happy in a 20 gallon. Also, keep in mind your options are like nearly limitless. There are so many different species of fish, it's not even funny in the pet trade. So just do your research. I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos just showing you basic species of fish and come to whatever you want to get in your fish tank. Just make sure you're certain about the size of tank they'll need and their acti uh, you know how active they are and there are a lot of different fish you can get for your tank. So just do your own research and trust me, you will not regret it. You'll probably enjoy those fish more. So now that we're done with 20s, I'm going to talk about 40s. So with a 40 gallon, you can basically do everything you do in a 20, but double it. Or you could have bigger and faster and just more active fish like I do in this tank. I have the black skirts and the danios, which I would not be able to have in a 20 gallon. So basically just everything's better in a 40 although i would still recommend you start with a 20 and not a 40 as it's much easier to maintain the last part of this video is going to be how many fish should you have per tank i'm only going to be talking about 10 gallons 20 gallons and 40 gallons so we're going to start off with the smallest with a 10 gallon you could have roughly five to seven fish depending on the size of the fish for instance you'd only be able to have like five platies in a 10 gallon However, you could have, say, seven smaller species of tetra instead. Or you could have a bunch of shrimp and a bunch of snails and not even have to worry about the amount of them in the tank. I'd say for a 20 gallon, you could have roughly 10 to 15 of really any fish that would be able to go in a 20 gallon and they should do fine. Although in a 20 gallon, you could do more than just one species. So you could have some tetras, some guppies, and some platies instead of just the one species in, say, a 10 gallon. With a 40 gallon, you could have a lot of different species of fish, and you could easily have 20 to 30 fish in there, and they would be perfectly happy. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please go check out my TikTok and Instagram for high-quality footage of photos, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya! Three, two, one.